Welcome to Sports Connection. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director, and I'm here with my co-host Tate Matthews. Tate, I was looking back at the spring sports last week, and I, I wanted to say great weather. That's probably not totally accurate, but anytime the spring, you don't really have to make up a lot, then it's a great weather week. Great weather. Well, it was sunny and very pretty, but not very warm. But that's okay. Sunday, it got turned up. And what a beautiful Easter Sunday that was, man. I got out and played a little pickleball. The coach and uh, Jackson and my brother, it got a little heated. But pickleball, great sport. I know you're a big but, tennis wait, guy. Now, wait a second. Who's, the, who's of that group? Who's the is, – is your dad the player? Um, Usually the older you are, the more you dominate pickleball. Yes, uh, what I would say is this: uh, it, It's the first time. It's funny you say that. I've, uh, Dad's the best athlete I've ever been around. Anything with a ball, he'll probably beat you. This is the first time where I I saw age got to him a little bit. Oh, so um, he probably would have been. He's no longer the man. So who was the man? It was pretty even, you know. Jackson's. If Jackson knew how to hold a backhand, it'd probably be Jackson. He hadn't figured that out. Of course, he was on the other team, so I did not tell him. So, I don't know. I felt like I had a good net game. Nick plays tennis. It was – but a great sport. Have you ever played? I have not played, but I've been told I, I need to. So, I guess what I'm saying is had Dad played pickleball in his 40s, 50s, it would have been him. Um, it's a great game, man. But great the ball game. doesn't bounce as high, right? It's like uh, – that's what I'd be worried about because it, it's a wiffle ball-ish kind of ball, right? Correct. So, I'm thinking at 6'3". It might be hard for me to kind of get down there and hit the balls. It I, would, but you'd be, you'd be, you're low game, but I mean, they ain't lobbing over you, or they're not lobbing. What? Over no you. way. Can you hit it out of the air? Oh yeah. I thought you, you can't scoot up and hit it out of the air. You well, be, no. There's a there's a line that you cannot go past. So say it's it's 18 inches, two feet, whatever from the net. You can't overhand past that. That line. But Does behind that, that line, you can take it out of the air. You can smash it. Okay. Or net game, volley. It's maybe, good stuff. Maybe we need to pull I'm it. a little sore today. <laughs> but back to your original question. Great, great. Anytime you can get in four or five baseball games in a week, that was a great weather week. Well, speaking of baseball, and not that it's over by any means because there's still a lot of series to play, but it looks like Brentwood and Summit kind of – not distancing themselves. Now, Ravenwood's 3-0. Right. They had not played any district games, but Brentwood and Summit, they matched up. Uh, they end up splitting Summit with a 13-2 win at Brentwood, uh, and then Brentwood turns around and wins 9-8 at Summit, a very exciting game. Uh, but those two teams, they've been powerhouses for a while. They're obviously going to be there. Ravenwood's sitting at 3-0. Independence at three and two. Franklin gets their first win this week, along with Centennial. Uh, Centennial, in fact, with a big win over Independence. So there's a lot to to be said, right? Yes. But Brentwood Summit, I think we're probably comfortable saying they're going to be there. Uh, looks like Ravenwood will be there too. Right. I thought the same thing, but then you see Ravenwood sitting there at three and zero. Oh. They just, as you mentioned, don't have any district games. So I I, I think kind of like when we look at the basketball standings every year. I think it's pretty much right, except Indy takes over Dixon County. I think those are your top four. Uh, there's going to have to be a major upset somewhere in the tournament, but I think the regular season ends, not necessarily in this order, Brentwood Summit, Ravenwood Independence. I think that's right. I, I agree with that. I, I agree with that for sure. And, you know, and the thing that makes it so difficult in baseball with only two teams advancing, which I personally love. Yes. <laughs> Makes it, I mean, that's tough. Now, are we still doing regular season is automatically in? Yes. Makes it even tougher. Well, so here's the other thing that I thought was interesting. And I don't like the fact that we've split up, right, for next year. Either. But think about that. We're going to have four teams now. Yes. Advance. Of course, we'll match up against one another in the region. So what's the difference, right? But, right. Uh, man, what a great league in baseball. Brentwood also, after that game was Summit, or that series with Summit, they took game one over Dixon County. Uh, at the taping of this show, they still have the second game to play. Summit took game one at Independence 10-6. Again, at the taping of this show, Independence and Summit still need to play game two. Not that it's critical time, but if Summit beats Independence and they move to 5-1 and one in the league and drop Independence to 3-3 three and three and they've swept them, then – you know, that, that puts Independence in a little bit of a hole. If Independence wins and they're both 4-2, and two, now it's back all square. Now it's all <laughs> – I 
that's a whole different ball game right there. No, no more. Se- if 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 Summit Summit can do a little bit of like our separation Friday, if they can get the win on this one, you're right. Uh, Independence gets it. Wow, it's going to be it's going to be down to the wire in the regular season. And like we were just talking about in in our district, what we do is the regular season champion moves on to the region champ region tournament, regardless of what they do in the district tournament. Yes, yeah, so that's one of those situations. If you make the final, you're sort of hoping they're there waiting, because if not, then you have to win the final. Right. It gets crazy. Yes. Uh, much the same as we have in soccer, we do the same thing there mm-hmm. uh, in soccer. And, so. and I like. I know we talked about it last year. I like it in, in baseball, softball, uh, soccer, because this this is so tough, man. You know, it it's, is tough. It is so. There's got to be some sort of a reward. For, for winning all those series, man, in my opinion. Well, and with that sport, to your, and I agree with you for that sport because of the pitching aspect of That's it. That's right. Because if you start doing uh, one game and eliminated, of course, usually it's double elimination, but I could be a team that finishes seventh, but my top pitcher has a chance to knock you off mm-hmm. if you're number one. So uh, it makes a lot of sense. It does. Hey, let's talk a little bit about Ravenwood. They get the 9-3, 9-6 series sweep over Spring Hill. Then they turn around and take one game one over Page. 9-0, they travel to Page for game two. Page now 0-3 on the season. Coach Bourne, and I can tell by talking with him, they feel pretty good about their team, too. Yeah, he, he feels really good about them. And, and one thing you notice uh, from talking to him, but also all you got to do is look at the scores, they're good from the plate. They've got some bats. Score some runs. 27 runs in their first three, nine, nine, and nine. That's pretty good average. Yeah, that adds up. <laughs> uh, Centennial, they split with Independence. I thought that was a big for Coach Boffman and I Centennial. 6 5 win at home over Independence. Independence wins game two, 12 2. And I don't know if you saw it, but uh, there was an article in the paper talking about Jack Boffman, who's playing at Independence, saying he was going to get a little bragging rights on dad, who's the coach uh, at Centennial. Uh, Little bragging rights at the dinner table. That's always nice, isn't it? A big win for him. I guess it depends on your perspective. <laughs> depends on which Bobman you are. Uh, it's my favorite quote. You remember when Tommy Bowden, oh, not my favorite quote, one of my favorite quotes. When, when Tommy Bowden was at Clemson and they played Florida State, Bobby Bowden versus Tommy Bowden. I think Mrs. Bowden's name is Ann. I'm, I'm pretty confident in that. For the sake of the show, it's They that. said, who are you cheering for? She said, I'll be cheering for the school that signs our paychecks, <laughs> Florida State. <laughs> Anyways, I guess Miss Boffman was for <laughs> Centennial. I would say so, too. <laughs> hey, Franklin, now one and three. They had that tough series against Summit, a couple of real competitive games. Well, they go out and split with Dixon, which I thought was pretty big. Big. Uh, they lose uh, two nothing at Dixon, but then they bounce right back with a four nothing win at home. So they nice. needed that one. They, that they was a series they had to at least split. They did. So uh, we'll see. Another week will tell us a lot more about Franklin. But I'll tell you this now: Coach Whitby likes that team. He does, and um, a lot of excitement around. They've got some bats too. So yeah, he feels like don't. I think he he kind of feels like they're a little bit laying in the weeds, getting ready to come up and sneak attack somebody. I think he does too. Hey, speaking of the Whitbys, let's talk a little softball. Big win for. Uh, Coach Whidbey of Franklin uh, in softball, 7-5 win over Ravenwood, yes. which I thought was a big district win. Also another big district win, Summit. I'm not necessarily surprised that Summit won, but the score. They get an 8 nothing win over Brentwood at home. Lily Kate Richards with the shutout, 13 strikeouts, Tate. Uh, big game there for Lily Kate. Hannah Sunberg, 3-4 for four, with three runs batted in for Summit in that effort. So that game, again, not necessarily surprised that Coach Stevenson and Summit get the win over Coach Powell and Brentwood, but to shut them out, when you're talking about those bats, we've talked about the Cockerels, that was pretty impressive. Without a doubt, yeah, dominating performance from the plate uh, by Lily Kate. So, yeah, I, you're right, very good win. And, 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 the, and, the, and the, the, the point differential was kind of an eye-opener too. So I think there's a lot of – I think there's even more parity in softball than there is in baseball. I agree with that. I really do. You can just tell by looking at the scores. Uh, Summit, by the way, they did not play in the Brentwood Invitational. We'll talk about that tournament here in just a second. They go to Soddy Daisy. Now, for those that are softball fans, that's a powerhouse. When you're talking Soddy Daisy, which usually attracts powerhouse teams. 
They go 3-0 and in pool play at Soddy Daisy before dropping a game to a pretty tough Walker Valley team. So, Coach Stevenson and Summit, that's a team that you mentioned early. Yeah. They're going to be right there in this race to win the title. 100%. Uh, they're down there in the bottom half. They won't be in the bottom half come the end of the season. In the in the standings. Right? Yeah, the early stand. Yeah. Correct. Way and early. that's I love that. That's kind of like, you know, I, I, if you're not going to play at the Brentford Invitational, which I understand. I understand doing it. I understand not doing it. But if you're going to go away, you know, a lot of times, you know, we try to go to a tournament we know we can win. That's a tough – that's like going out of town and going to the Saudi Daisy Invitational wrestling tournament. <laughs> you're going there to get better. <laughs> <laughs> Very well said. Thank you. Uh, Brentwood Invitational. 20 teams at three sites, Granny White, Centennial hosted a site, Nowensville hosted a site, Nowensville Columbia Academy Station Camp where the individual site winners, usually a little bit bigger tournament than that, but still to get 20 teams uh, there, I know Coach Powell was excited about that. Uh, Nowensville, they were a team that really stood out to mm -hmm. me the way they performed. They had a big 6-2 win over Page uh, in their final game. Avery Patton had a complete game. Gave up only one earned run in that win. They also defeated Smyrna, Lexington, Summertown. So big, big weekend for no one's Big weekend, as you know, as you well know, Summertown, one of the powerhouses in single-A softball. That's a nice win. Page, during that tournament, had a win over White House Heritage. Shelby Buffington, allowing just one hit over four innings. Drove in a run, struck out four. And I thought this was a pretty interesting stat. Yeah. 31 of her 45 pitches were strikes. Yes. And I don't think those were like dropping ball whiffs. I think those were right down the pipe. Heaters <laughs> just couldn't hit it. Do you think – you remember – I don't know if you remember this with uh, when Frank Wycheck was doing the, the morning show there yeah. for 104.5 when he challenged – like a local pitcher? Yes. Was it a high school pitcher? I can't remember. Uh, I don't remember. This is a professional athlete, and he went down big time. Oh, he was, he was talking smack. <laughs> you know, he really wishes he was a pro wrestler. He, 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 he said it before. He'd get rid of his Hall of Fame career. Oh, well, he's not a Hall. He should, he's close. He's close. He won't be. He, but uh, his great NFL career to be a pro wrestler. Anyways, he was talking smack. He didn't even come close. He was telling her he was going to take that thing yard. <laughs> It didn't even come close. I feel like it might have been like a Lipscomb college player, but I may be wrong. Yeah, we need to, Mr. Producer or not so intern Lance anymore needs to check. That's that right. Out. That's that could be a gem. It wasn't. It wasn't Jenny Finch, was it? like it wasn't that. No, big. I don't think yeah. it was that kind of level. In fact, it may have been FRA players because that's where his daughter went, right? Uh, well, and Father Ryan. Yeah. Okay, so maybe it's one of. He didn't even come close. It was bad. <laughs> Hey, I'll never forget the first one. I, Don Frudenthal, he's the already. This is off the rails. But Jennifer Wright, Mike Wright's daughter, or oldest daughter who, who um, married Ingle Martin. She's the first one I remember going to watch. And I'm telling you now, a, a dominating fastball softball pitcher, in some ways that's even more impressive than a, a fastball baseball thrower. I mean, like, she, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't stand at the plate and let her throw that at me. No. Well, and I'll tell you this, and it's not really a thing in softball, maybe like it is baseball, but think about if it was one of their things to, like, be a little wild. Like, for me, if I were pitching. <laughs> Hitting people. <laughs> my first pitch would be, like, behind the batter. Like, oh, my bad. Yeah, like wild thing. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, it's like jumpy feet up there because it's so close. Oh. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, if you hadn't had a chance, folks, get out and watch some softball. And we got some good ones. Yeah, we do. We definitely do. Uh, Ravenwood, I did want to mention, got a big win uh, over Good Pasture 6-1. Avery Wismer, I don't know if I'm saying that right, or Weismer, and Lindley Pittman drove in a couple of runs for Ravenwood. Uh, Avery also on the mound, uh, doing a good job for them, allowing only two hits, one earned run, no walks. Ella Sasser with a double. So, Ravenwood, I think they went one and three over the weekend, but they think they got better. Saw the quote from the coach, hey, we're getting better, looking forward to getting back into district play. And remember, they had a win over Brentwood. That's what I was going to say. We're getting better. We're still working progress, and we already had a win over in the Battle of the Wood. Had a, a Daniel Cochran. I know I talk about him all the time. They're my boys. Daniel Cochran, freshman at Brentwood High. Evan Gaynor, freshman at Raven Y. Uh, we had a little downtime in AAU basketball. We went and played putt-putt. 
Coach Jay Gaynor, Evan's dad, and I were the winning team. <laughs> Anyways, talking to Daniel and Evan is a battle of the wood, battle of the woods. They both said woods. I stand firm. It's still a battle of the wood. It's the battle of Brentwood. So, uh, Ravenwood, yes, don't forget about that. The win, that's along with the win of the battle of the wood softball edition. Um, and they're still getting better. So that means she thinks they can be really good. So I know uh, uh, not intern Lance will appreciate this. Because you do the wood thing and I do woods, from time to time I'm going to slip in the RBI thing too. That's right, RBI. So. <laughs> hey, let's talk a little soccer. Franklin 7, Summit 3. Uh, Franklin with goals from Finn Jacobs. Uh, Bradley Whelan had two goals. Benji Wright, Woody Ramey, Shan Wakutsi. Wakutsi? Yeah. I like that. Shane, yeah, we're, we're going Suki. with it. Shane, Shane. Uh, we're going with it. And then uh, uh, Dawkey also with a uh, goal for Franklin. But here's what I want to point out. Here was my point mentioning those guys. Six different guys scored. Yes. you got to feel pretty good about that if your coach were going. First of all, anytime you score seven goals in soccer, that's a big deal. Big deal. When six different people score those seven goals, you're exactly right. That's a really big deal. And it's against Summit another WCS opponent who's really good. So, yeah, that's we don't do WCS on WCS crime here. If we did, that is boat <laughs> captain worthy, but we don't do that here. Well, I noticed you got your hat, so I know it's coming up here in just a Maybe. Maybe it's a little uh, preview, a little teaser. Hey, another, again, another big win for Centennial. You have Ravenwood, Brentwood, yes. powerhouses in the league. They tie, but what ends up happening a couple nights later Centennial with a 3-2 win over Ravenwood. So, big win for the Cougars there. Big win for them. Big win for them. And then, as I know you're going to mention, Ravenwood turns around and beats Overton. Uh, so, that's a lot of games. There must have been makeup make up week uh, in soccer because that's a lot of games in one week. You know, they try to limit it to one or two. So, a lot of running. Well, in Ravenwood, uh, again, kind of like Franklin in that Overton win, they had five different players score which I thought was a big deal. Barron, Alina Jad, Chisholm, Gary, and Michael all score goals for Ravenwood. Brentwood, who maybe they're starting to yes. kind of inch out in front too, uh, looking forward to their, uh, their, their match with, uh, with Franklin. But they have a 5-0 win over Independence. Klein Simmons, Aiden Parker with goals. And Ollie Joyner with the hat trick yes. to educate our fans here, which means... Three goals. Three goals. So, great night for Ollie Joyner. Shut out for Logan Stegall. Again, Brentwood playing well. Coach P likes his team. He likes his Bruins team. And for good reason. But he thinks they're going to be strong. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, you're starting to see this, and obviously tennis as well. If you're talking about the spring sports, to me, that's where Brentwood, you really start seeing them distance themselves a little bit. If you're talking – uh, the Director's Cup, they've won the Director's Cup, I think, every year but one that we've had it. And I think the spring sports really solidify it for them. Oh, yeah. Well, they get out to that lead, yes. In, in, in those years, they get out to that lead. Uh, I don't – is the Director's Cup eight years old? Well, you, so that I think means – 14 was the first year. So you know you've got one fall sport championship coming in volleyball. And runner-up in football. <laughs> Right. So, oh, you're talking about every year. Right? Yeah, I mean, like, and then, <laughs> so you know you got one, and then come spring, yeah, that's right, that's where they really start to separate themselves. And the year that Ravenwood, the, the year you're talking about, that they did not win the Directors' Cup, Ravenwood did, and Ravenwood had the better spring. Yeah, I think it makes a difference. Uh, speaking of Brentwood and spring dominance, let's talk a little bit about track and the Scott Hartman relays, which brings us to this week's gym, Tate. Scott Hartman, graduate of Brentwood High School. Yep. They named the event after him, and that's pretty special, right? Oh, it's a big deal. Has been for a long time. Scott was, uh, Scott was a won the decathlon at, at Brentwood High. Then went on to UT in 1987 in his first collegiate track meet. Got hit by a hammer, the hammer throw, errant hammer throw. Um, and he just never recovered from it, you know. Um, I think third passed when he was 36. So many cool things about it. But one, as I got to thinking about it, he won the decathlon back in, I think, 85, 86, okay? Well, guess who is dominant in decathlon now? 
Brentwood High, Jet Kinder and all them, they've been, they've been dominating that event since back 1985. And I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of him. He was a man, he was a, he was ahead of his time. So as dominant as Jet Kinder is, I don't know how you don't say he's the greatest of all time. At Brentwood High, I don't know, man. Scott Hartman was up there. You know what I'm saying? So, but it was, it was really a tragic thing. But the, then he came back and he, he was, he was, he was, you know, battled paralysis the rest of his life. But uh, they named the event after him. Uh, it's a great event. I mean, uh, the, the meet after him, it's a great meet. He would come back every year. His mom would bring him back. His sister Pam came and spoke this year. Uh, and, it, you know, pretty cool, man, because he was, he was an unbelievable athlete. And, and it's a great event. Coach Sig, you know, uh, really took a lot of pride in it. Coach Brock's brought it back. And anytime Brentwood Academy's come in and Ensworth and then all the Wilco teams, it's a strong, strong track event. So. Well, and the thing I like about it, sometimes you'll see events or games or whatever it is named after someone. That's still going strong. Still, oh, and it won't go anywhere. And it's, and it's great because you talked about his sister being there and yeah. speaking, and that's just magnificent. I mean, it's, you have to – that doesn't pull at the heartstrings a little bit. Something's wrong with you. Yeah, and they said it was, you know, when she spoke, she did a really good job. And you could tell the, the athletes received it. So, um, but again, the, if you didn't, for those of us that are, uh, for those of you that are too young, I'm not. Um, he was, he was it, man. Like he was stud athlete. Let's talk about the results. Uh, Brentwood wins the girls and boys uh, 177 over second place Ensworth at 127.5 on the girls' side. On the boys' side, uh, Brentwood with 127, second place at 117. Captain, my captain. <laughs> is, this a, is this a first? I believe this is the first boat race <laughs> edition for track and field, but I got to thinking about it. They, you know, they, the, the Mar March Madness through Ravenwood, Brentwood boys, Brentwood girls, they win. The Hartman relays and some really good teams, Brentwood boys, Brentwood girls win. It's just become boat race city and <laughs> track and field in the middle of Tennessee. And Coach Brock and Coach Fedoris are the boat captains. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is big time now. This is when big time. When you're Congratulations. Bringing, when you're bringing it out for, for a spring sport, you hadn't seen it. Brentwood Lady Bruins track, it could be. I don't want to put too much pressure on you. It's kind of like you and it's kind of like you and Paige, Lady Patriot basketball. Coach, Coach Brock's calling me. Golly, would you tell Joins to quit uh, guaranteeing we're making it? They made it. I'm putting Lady Bruins on 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 uh, notice. I think it's Boat Race City and Lady Bruins track from here on out. No, I agree with you. And I'm going to go the next step, saying they're going to win the state title. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you're saying, oh, yeah. you're saying boat race at the state championship. Old Hickory, man. You ever been on Old Hickory in your beach days and that power boat's out there going down Drake's Creek? I didn't know. Well, if I was out there this year, I would see, I would see Coach Brock out there, wouldn't I? Dang right. <laughs> That's great. Hey, so you know what stood out to me? There's several things that stood out. But if you're talking about, there was 36 events, right? 18 boys, yep. 18 girls. Franklin had two winners. <sighs> Summit had a winner. Independence had two winners. Ravenwood had three. Brentwood had ten. Yeah. Ten of the 36 winners were from Brentwood. Do you, do you, do you, do you know you used to have those sunglasses on? Yes, I do. <laughs> you took the hat off. I didn't know. <laughs> hey, I'm listen. channeling my, no, no, okay, go my with inner <laughs> Viper from, uh, you remember which one Viper was in Top Gun? It was Tom Skerritt. Oh, and he was the guy who was the teacher. Yes. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so... That stood out to me, and I'll tell you something else I thought was pretty darn cool. If you look over at the girls' 1,600 meter meter run, you had Jane Halterman. Yes. Right, number one. Yes. Number two, you had Julia, but then down there on 20 seconds, you see Joanna. <laughs> There's three. <laughs> you talking about dominance? That's dominance. In that family, right? In that family, in that event, everything. Uh, that's pretty neat, man. I, I know their, their parents got to be very proud of that. But, um, yeah, like you said, that was the first thing you said. I didn't know there was a third one. I mean, there's some points right there. Yeah. Vander Koch, you see that name again. Yep. Uh, uh, Arkeva, Alyssa from Ravenwood, you see her winning again. You know, some of the same names are showing up. 
and again in back-to-back big-time events. Without a doubt. And I, I, I tell you the thing, not to keep going on the Lady Bruins, but it's, it's just an, it's a great story this year. Then, then you look at Holland Powers, what I thought was really cool. Uh, she wins the long jump. She's, she's ranked in the top five in the long jump and the triple jump, okay? Well, those kind of tie together. Then she comes back. If you'll remember last week what we were talking about, what I think is the toughest event in, in, in track and the field. Hurdles. She's also, I think, top five. No, I know she's top five. She, she might be one, but she's top five in the state in the 300 hurdles. That's a big... Yeah. Surely she's worn out when the, when the events are over. Uh, also, Brentwood gets the big double in the 400 meter. Samuel Sullivan on the boys' side. Uh, Camille Williams on the girls' side. Uh, you mentioned that 300-meter hurdles. James uh, Patrick of Franklin was the winner there. Uh, again, great event. We had some really great weather on Saturday particularly, and uh, I know Coach Brock was pleased with it. Without a doubt. Uh, Holland did. She did win the triple jump as well. Um, yeah, he was, he was very pleased. And, you know, in, 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 um, he talks a lot about uh, assistant coach, which he doesn't like to call him that. Uh, Joe Fedoris, he's a big part of it too. You know, he designs the, the practices and the workouts. And um, if you never spent time over there, man, it's 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 not just show up and all right, let's run around the track. I mean, it's 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 designed, it's planned out. It's it's like a it's like an old Darren Joins basketball practice. Well, you there's gotta, a there is a uh, there's a reason why we do everything in practice. Well, it's it's a controlled chaos kind of thing because there's so many people. Right. But people with. Uh, roles and responsibilities. I did want to mention also the double there for Brentwood and the 4x400 on the boys and girls side as well. So great event, had a lot of WCS individuals do well, and then obviously uh, the dominance from Brentwood on the boys and girls side. Did want to mention the final standings here uh, from some of our teams on the boys side. Summit finishes eighth, Ravenwood sixth, Franklin fifth, Indy fourth. Uh, excuse me, that was the girls' side I just mentioned. On the boys' side, uh, Summit 10th, Indy 9th, uh, Ravenwood 6th, Franklin 4th, and, of course, Brentwood wins both. So, again, great event. Love it. Love the background you gave on the name there. Uh, and I think most of our viewers probably know that, but I just didn't know if it had been talked about before. Yeah, he was – I mean, go over – the next time you're over at Brentwood for a basketball game or whatever it is you're over there for, go look on their wall of fame and you'll see a picture of them. And just remember, that was in, there was no weightlifting classes or <laughs> in school back then. And you, deltoids, I mean, he was, he was a specimen. The real deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm glad his memory's had, living Had up. Ron Crawford been the head football coach then, I assure you to play football. <laughs> he was a dude. Tate, always great to see you. Love talking spring sports, giving these athletes some props. Again, there's a lot of sports going on. But yes. we, got, we need to talk about it. Uh, uh, they deserve their recognition, too, and certainly it's a great time of the year for WCS when you're talking spring sports. No doubt about it, and, and, and like we talked about earlier, you get a good pitcher's duel in a softball game, uh, it's as exciting as anything. Plus, you're out there in the sun. Real quick, I know we got to go. Since we've done so well on our NCAA March Madness picks, do you have a – and now that it's down to two, we got a 50 Do you have a prediction on who wins the national championship? Well, obviously it's uh, Gonzaga taking on uh, Baylor. It's pretty rare that the best two teams are playing, but the best two teams are playing. I, I really think the Zags are going to win, but since everybody else is picking it, I'll go Baylor. Really? Dang. I was going to go Baylor. So you going the Zags? I'm going Zags. I think it'll be a great game, though. It's going to be fun. Going to be hard to top that one this weekend. I'm excited. Me as well. Thank you for joining us for Sports Connection. We'll see you next time.